everyone, welcome to another episode of FPV Inside Look. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a company called Fly Color, and more in particular, their ESC. But first, a little history on Fly Color. They started back in 2009 doing a lot of research and development on ESCs, and they use them for anything from airplanes, boats, drones, RC cars. Some of their major markets right now are Australia and Korea, but they are looking to branch out their distribution to hit more markets like Europe or South America. So if you're interested in possibly selling some fly color ESC, be sure to give them a call and start talking about it. Now this is a 60 amp 4-in-1 ESC. You can program it through BL Heli 32, which is kind of nice because you can get those custom startup tones. Everybody's got to customize their drone. Another thing I really like about it is the heat sink on top. The aluminum plating up here really helps dissipate heat. In fact, it was doing such a good job that I uh, had a little bit of a hard time soldering because I didn't realize it would be pulling that much heat away. So it was definitely doing its job and it has a nice purple color which gives it a little extra flair. On the bottom side, it has a ribbon cable and it does come with that. If you open it up, it has some directions, the ESC, and a bag full of goodies. XT60 to power it up, and you'll solder that right onto those plates. And it will come with two versions of the cable to connect to your flight controller. Now, be careful, do not just plug the ESC in and then plug it into whatever flight controller. You have to make sure the pin map is correct. If you plug it in wrong, and you don't check that, you could fly your, fry your flight controller and you'd be very upset. So always double check the mapping of the wires before you plug it into your flight controller. It wasn't too bad, there are some pins here that I can use a small tweezers on or a razor blade. Pop the pins up, pull them out, put them back in. It's not ideal, but it does work pretty well. Just be very gentle on those pins and make sure they snap back in properly. You don't want them coming loose while you're flying. It also comes with a 35 volt capacitor. Now this flight controller can handle 6S and that's what I've built here. This is a 6S 6 inch drum that I'm going to be using for a lot of medium range and long range. I have uh, 1700 kV motors on it, eco motors. I'm using a Radix Brain FPV flight controller, a Crossfire transmitter and receiver, TBS Unify VTX and a Foxeer camera. On the back, I do like to have a long range antenna when doing that to get my antenna above my batteries and all my components. This is the Axie 2 from Lumineer, meant for long range. Now it is really easy to solder up. The pads are on the outside. Each motor has three wires and wire them straight in. If a motor is spinning the wrong direction, you can either flip flop one of the wires or you can go into BL Heli and remap the motor. Uh, make sure that the number one motor is the number one motor and the number four is the number four in Betaflight also. I've been very happy with the performance of the ESC so far. I am undercutting the ESC power. It's a 60 amp ESC and I'm honestly probably barely drawing 30 amps if I'm doing a heavy, heavy punch out to get over a tree or something. This is meant for long range and cruising and I did some freestyle, did some tree surfing, skimming across lakes, over rivers and after I got it built and realized the performance was there, I wasn't worried about putting it over the water or over the ice or putting it deep back a mile because the performance was there and it was working very well. Now when I was doing some of my long range I did, had to ca I did have to calibrate the current sensor on there to make sure my current draw was displaying properly. It was I believe 40 to 50 percent low undershooting my draw from my battery and how much battery I was actually using. So I did have to go into Betaflight and compensate for that. And I'm still dialing it in after about three or four different packs, I was able to get it really close to an acceptable margin. I do like the heat sink on top. I like the color because it looks cool, but it was doing its job at taking heat away. I noticed it when I was soldering. And then after coming down, I could feel my motors. They may be warm and the ESC was 
cold because I'm flying up here. It is winter time right now, but that's how I want my electronics. I don't want them to be warm when I'm coming back. Maybe just slightly, but no more than that. I do trust my rig to go out a couple miles on this ESC. There's, there's nothing going on that makes me suspect it's going to go out soon or something's wrong or there's going to be a desync. It's been working really well and I look forward to seeing more products from Flycolor in the future. I have talked to them and they're working on some very big ESCs for commercial use and working on some flight controller stack combinations, possibly a 2020 stack with an F7 flight controller on it. So you can look forward to more products coming out of Flycolor in the very near future. They said these products will be hitting the market 2020. So with that being said, it's now your turn to hopefully pick one up and try it for yourself. I hope you have a good rig ready to build because this has got the power for it. All you have to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel, Average Hobbyist. Leave a comment down below on what you think about Flycolor. Have you heard from them? They've been around a while, but not so much in the US market. Please also head over to my Instagram page, NorCal Drones, or on Facebook. And if you ever want to chat about a build, get some recommendations, or just hang out, you can hit me up on those social media platforms. Good luck to everyone out there. Thanks a lot for watching, and keep ripping packs.